Just a reminder to subscribe. Let's help dad get to his 50K goal. Hello, everyone. And hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Well, you're going to be in governor land by the time you, uh, this one gets aired, I think, aren't you? Yeah, we'll be there. So if you see that we um, look like what we wore last week, um, trust us, our clothes is fresh. We just, <laughs> <laughs> we just did back to backs because. Morgan and Justin decided they want to abandon me. Just when I get home, they're going to take off and go away. Yeah. They're giving you a taste of your own medicine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so welcome back to this week's Father Know Something, FKS as I go by. And um, I'm sure you have a good theme for us, good shows. Justin's checking out his uh, seat assignment for the airplane. Yeah, Justin takes off in less than 24 hours. So he's trying to get, you know, all his ducks in a row. We got to do laundry tonight. We got to pack. It's pretty so, wild. All right. So we're going to get right into this. Let's dive in. Let's do it. kind of stole my dive in over there kind of i feel really i feel like you you know just took a part of my identity that was an attack an attack i feel attacked totally totally just a brainless thing that just came out of my mouth so it was not intended to, to do anything to hurt you <laughs> i don't darling. own let's dive in i'm being i'm kidding. i don't want to get your signature what's going to be your signature to start it uh, cowabunga I, I don't think that's going to be it hakuna matata I don't think that's going to be it. Hmm. We'll find out when it hits. Okay, you know but, it'll be natural. The way, by the way, yeah. it's been it's it's been over a year. I was going to say we're <laughs> we're at like sixty something episodes. I think so. we're more than that. I think we're in the eighties. It's been a minute. We are in the eighties. I think we're in the eighties, Morgan. Morgan's out of touch. Wait, what number? Oh my god, this this will be number eighty seven. What are we going to do for one hundred? Something huge. I think we're going to... I think we need to do the barbecue and open it up for people and let them come in and we just do the celebration thing. I think we really do something cool. Yeah. What do you guys think? Let us know. I don't know. Let you us got, know. You got like 14 weeks. I think it's great. Cool. I think we should I think we should do something special. So let us know your ideas and episode one hundred, yeah. Let's, let's make it let's make it happen. It'll let's be good. do it. Okay, so for this first one, I never introduced the theme during our little intro, but essentially these people just have problems, some of which you might be able to relate to and really give them the advice that one gets after going through the situation. You know that old saying? It's always 2020 in hindsight. Mm -hmm. Hindsight 2020. 2020 vision. So that's kind of the vibe. Like maybe your advice can prevent these people from having to use that expression I will about do, their situation. I will do. I will use all my 66 years now because my birthday was last week. By the way, it went, went mm -hmm. right by because I was south, down under. But I, I would definitely like to say that I'm going to use my 66 years of experience to try to give them. Save them some struggle. Save them a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so up first. Yes, Hi, Holly, Morgan, Justin, and Jerry. I've, 26 female, been with my husband, 26 male, for 11 years, married for five years. We have one dog who is an angel. Her personality and mine match perfectly. She can be lazy when she wants, but also wants to play. We recently got another dog because my husband wanted one who matched his personality better, a dog to go hiking and fishing with. I was very on the fence about a second dog because I had a feeling I would be the one taking care of him, but he talked me into it. And what? And who's taking care of the dog? Now we have him, and he's so full of energy, and I don't really have much energy myself. We go camping, and I want to lay in the trailer for a few hours and take a nap. I have to take both dogs with me because, quote, he doesn't want to deal with him right now. It's his dog. It drives me crazy. Driving me crazy. Because I have him almost all of the time. And my husband almost never has him alone. I love this dog. He's very sweet and I'd never want to get rid of him. I just want some alone time. I just wish my husband could spend time alone with the dog 
he wanted. He signed up for this thing. It's he- his, this is his. This is his deal. He signed <laughs> up for it. Get him. Get him on the line with us. Bring him on in. Any advice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ideal outcome for my husband to realize on weekends he needs to spend time with the dog he wanted. Additional info. My husband is great. He is so supportive in everything else in my life. I just don't think he realized that a high energy dog was going to be a handful. I'm working on training the dog and he has been getting better, but he is never going to be low energy. And I am. I need my high energy husband to spend time with him. This is not your dog. I've tried telling him this and he says he'll work on it and it just doesn't get better. I end up tapped with the dog and then I feel bad. I don't have more energy to give him. All right, here's the drill. <laughs> what? You just been waiting. You can't even hold it in. I cannot because <laughs> he he signed on for this is all his gig. And I'm sorry, you're you you are in, you are enabling this behavior. Number one, in order to train your forget training the dog, we got to train the husband first. <laughs> And just, just with that, and, and I'm and I'm totally real with that. He's got to take the dog to training. He's got to be the one to teach this dog to be the dog that he wants. Today we went for breakfast, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And 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 a guy walks up with a dog, and my comment to myself was, "He's not on a leash. We have a leash law here. Your dog's got to be on a leash." And the dog was wearing a t-shirt and that got to you saying, God, it's too too hot outside. That dog it's can't be. It's 95 degrees. This was a double-coated golden retriever and he's in a t-shirt. Right. So, Absolute so Morgan bad was go- dog owner. Morgan, Morgan was going nuts with that. And he didn't have anything on his paws and the concrete was so hot. Okay. I was pissed. All this is going on and the, and the guy comes into like this outside seating area on the street and the dog stops dead at the curb next to me. And I'm thinking, oh, the dog wants to hang out with me. You know, was, you trying know, to get away from the guy. <laughs> but it was not the case. That dog was so well trained that he had that dog knowing exactly what to do. The dog did not step off the curb until he got permission to yep. do so. And sat there. So the point is, is that, look, your husband got a, obviously some kind of retrieval, retriever. Or a he, Springer Spaniel. Something to go hunting and fishing with. So he got a dog that is that typically is pretty bright. And if they're trained, they're amazing. So this is really up to him. And you got to put the onus on this guy to say, this is your dog. You, you bought into it. I love you, honey, but this is your gig and you're going to follow through on it. Mm-hmm. And don't put it on me. Cause I got enough of my own shit going on. I'm low energy. And you can, and you can I'm tell, chilling. and you can tell your husband point blank. I got my own shit going on and I didn't sign up for this one. I love you. But oh well, you're gonna deal with it. Yeah. This is your dog, not my dog. You know what I wonder yeah. if what it is? Yeah. I wonder if he got this dog because he was kind of jealous of the relationship that she has with, you know, her favorite dog. And I wonder if he got this dog to like, oh, I want a dog that loves me more. Not my problem. And right? <laughs> this dog, though, because he's not investing the time in. The dog doesn't love him more. The dog is drawn to her because she's the one putting in the time. And then he's just even more mad. So it's like, you take the dog. I could see it. And it's like, I think people need to understand like time, put the time in, Mm -hmm. give him a shit ton of treats. Dog's going to love you more. Just put the time in, dude. Don't keep potting the dog off. Dogs love to be trained. They love to work with their trainer. They find their love, their allegiance. Listen, pot. Oops. Listen, buddy. (laughs) Putts? I was going to say putts. What's wrong with putts? For the husband. I don't think putts is offensive. Oh. A stupid or worthless person. <laughs> Listen, putts. <laughs> Listen, buddy. Your dog. Dad has spoke. Yeah. And I know something. Well, you know, given your experience, yeah. I've brought home a lot of animals in my day. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't want them. I yeah. Con- I convinced you. So this is kind of the same vibe. Like he really convinced her, you know, given that hindsight being, you know, 2020, if she doesn't put her foot down and keeps kind of enabling him. It's going to happen. It's, not, it's her dog. Yeah. It, it, this is, I'm not telling you, to, I mean, 
this is all in love and fun when I, with the way I'm saying it, but that's the way, but it's real. It is real. This is his dog. Do not accept this. Let him know. I'm not telling you to get rid of the dog. You just make sure that he realizes he's got to go, f- go find training. Even if he doesn't find the training, hand him the piece of paper. Here is Sunday training every Sunday at the park. You and Bonzo are going there and you're going to go bond, do your thing. Yeah. Go fishing. In the morning, Sunday morning, first thing I, when, when, or I think it's Sunday mornings, we have um, uh, the doggy show that's on. I think it is, yeah. What show? The the agility uh, course. C, CB, no, CB, oh, it's on CBS. There's a, there is a show about training, you know, matching families and training the dogs and oh that oh, one, yeah, yeah. The only way this is going to work, he's got to recognize that this is his best friend, and he's going to take this dog and and really follow up with what he is, or he himself is going to have to go get rid of the dog. Yeah, I think you got to realize the time commitment that comes with a this, pet like a dog. This is not your. This was not your gig. This is his gig, and I would hold him accountable a hundred percent. Well, yeah. another idea too you for another, someone that you got another one. Well, for people that are like low energy and might have a dog that they rescued from the shelter and is crazy high energy and it just doesn't mix their vibe, but they don't want to get rid of it. There are things like that you can get for your dog that one just like do all the work without you doing it. One is a treadmill. Those can be expensive. But two, there's this like little thing and I don't know what it's called, but you set it up in the shape of a square or a rectangle and it's this little like flag and you can re- it you, you can control the yep. speed on a remote and your dog chases it. He's got to spend time with the dog. Right. <laughs> yes, he absolutely should. But if he's not going to and the dog is going to get neglected. He's got to give the dog away to a home. He's got to find a home for the dog. This is his deal. Some people don't believe in that, though. This is his deal. I agree, but he some people in, don't believe and this in that. Isn't, and I'm sorry if I'm yelling. This is not her worry. He's the one that did this. Mm-hmm. Put him online with me. <laughs> bring him. Bring him forward. Let me have. Let me have my way with this guy. <laughs> it's very interesting because a lot of times you have the dads that are super opposed to getting whatever the pet is, mm-hmm. and then they become the pet's literal best friend. Yeah. It's literally. It's like the opposite of this. This goofball. Brought me Holly. I kept saying, <laughs> no Holly. I did. Oh, so you, this is personal. It's not my dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm I think next. at the end of it, it's, oh, no. it's about the, it's the, it's the commitment. <laughs> you got to realize getting a pet is a commitment. It's not getting a fish, which fish are still a commitment, but this isn't a toy. there's a different level of commitment with different pets and a dog is, is a big level it, of commitment. It is huge. Because yes, you can spend the money to always have it be with other people or be at doggy daycare, yeah, but be bullshit. fair and be, get be it for the dog. right reasons, not for some weird insecurity that you have with your how girlfriend many, and her How many her times? How, I don't, I'm, I'm how totally- I know, but I'm just theoretically. I'm times, talking. No, you're not. I'm how totally many speculating ta- there. How many times has, has the love of your life Come to me and said, Dad, I'm gonna, I'm going to foster a dog. I'm bringing home a shepherd. We're gonna foster a dog or another dog. And I looked at her and said, There's no way it ain't happening. You can foster all you want, but you're not living here and doing it. <laughs> you're out. These are things for me to inherit. This is all yours, <laughs> you guys. Okay, enough of you. Enough of you. Move it along. Okay, you got number two. So you guys got you got my feeling on that last one. I. I think we did. Yeah. I think it's safe to say. Go ahead. Number two. Number two. Love this podcast and two hot takes. My coworkers and best friend all message each other every week of all the stories. Hey, I love that. Now on to my question. I can't wait for it. How do I prepare for my sister's potential divorce? I, 24 female, have a sister, 33, who has been married to her partner, 38 male, for seven years. Mm -hmm. To explain their relationship, my sister is a workaholic, but is driven and passionate about her work. My brother-in-law is the complete opposite. He's an addict to drinking and occasional pills. He is always in between jobs and says everything in life is a scam or conspiracy. Mm. He constantly puts down my sister for her weight or work life choices. This year, she was fed up. 
She gave him the ultimatum to get a job and clean up his act, or by August, they will file for divorce. The whole half of the year, he pretended to clean up his act and hid his drinking from the whole family. Our true test was going to be the family vacation in May on a cruise to see if he will be sober and not ruin the trip. Well, he had the whole family fooled. I left the cruise thinking he didn't drink once and was changing his ways since my sister gave him the deadline. What my sister didn't tell me was that when you get the bill at the end of the cruise, his account said he spent 800 on booze the entire four days. Mind you, this man has no job. I'm coming to you because I need help on how to help my sister if they proceed with divorce. I know her friends all live in different states, and since she works all the time, she doesn't go out as much. I live close to her, and for me, our family has been so toxic to me that I moved out and am still dealing with boundaries and putting myself first. If my sister goes through her divorce, I want to help her find new things to do or people to interact with than going to me every day or calling me every day on her way home from work talking about the job I used to do. If she doesn't get divorced, how can I just ignore her complaints then if she won't help herself become happy in her marriage? I think she pretty well determined that she is going to get the divorce. Now we're now we're in September. So we don't know really what has It could have been a threat though, and she just We don't know. We, we don't, don't have know. an update. Yeah. True. So the answer really is if let's let's assume that her sister first followed through. Let's go with that one. If she followed through, I say good for her. And she is she is so committed to her work, that's going to keep her pretty well absorbed to go deal with a lot of these feelings by just focusing on her work. Mm -hmm. And how in love do you think she really is with this guy that has been basically beating the shit out of her emotionally, has not really been there to, to do what she really asked? She's kind of over it. You know, when you start keeping score, typically... The game, you know, game is over when you start keeping score. Or she loves him so much and that's why she stayed. We don't know. No. We don't know. As far as what's the, what's the baby sister's job here? Be your, be a sister. You don't have to be her babysitter. You really, you, I'm, not, I'm not even going to suggest you do that, but you can certainly be there to say, how how's your day doing? I'm thinking about you. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to be going out this weekend. You want to join me? I know that you're, that, that you're, you know, you're, you're pretty focused on work, but if you want to get away, here's where I'm going to be and, you know, you know, join us. You can do that. You don't have to do it every day. But again, you're not her caretaker. You're her sister. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't confuse the two. Yeah. That's, that's this guy's advice. Yeah. I think this is tough. It sounds like her husband is really dealing with severe alcoholism um, and he needs help. I mean, when you're going through such lengths and effort to hide your addiction. And this is a really tough position to be in. So I would say, yeah, support your sister, but recognize it's not your burden to carry. You know, if she's not willing to take advice, then there's not much more you can do. Mm -hmm. But um, I think, yeah, you can help her meet new people and get healthier habits and feel supported and loved. And, mm -hmm. you know, be, be a sister, be a sister. Right. And if it becomes a problem to you that you feel that she's relying on you too much, you can have that discussion. Mm -hmm. But when it all first goes down, just see how it evolves before jumping and being like, listen, I'm going to help you so that you don't bother me. Like that would be a weird approach that, that versus would be, that would be negative. See if it becomes a problem and then have that discussion. But, you know, try not in, to, and don't drive it that way. Drive it to the way that you're, you know, that. Set, set the standard kind of like in the beginning right. of what of what your expectation of this relationship is going to be going forward. So she sees herself, look, she's going to be working. She's a workaholic. Half your, She's going to pour herself into her work. Maybe, we but hope. She's, also, she's also paying for everything. This guy's not working. So she's supporting two people and maybe- She's if she's if she filed for the divorce, she wouldn't need to support two people anymore. So right. maybe she'll have more time to go out, make friends, let's, let's, be happy, yeah. up, pursue uh, hobbies. Update when you hear this one come up. Update us. Let us know what's really going on because yeah. it's September now. We're we're past the August deadline. I'd like to know really what is going on. Yeah, and this is hard. I've I've been in situations where you know you have friends or family that keep coming to you again and again 
And again, with the same problem, mm -hmm. the same story. You know, if he doesn't change this time, I'm I'm leaving. Oh, well, you know, two months later, if he doesn't change this time, I'm leaving. And yeah. it can, I do feel like this person's kind of at their wits end hearing about it. Like mm -hmm. that's kind of the vibe yep. I'm getting. Um, I hope she did do it. I hope she pulled the trigger. Yeah, I, you know, I think it would probably be better for her um, and making, you know, sure this guy gets the help he needs and is still kind of encouraged to heal and become happy and not depend on alcohol. But yeah, obviously for her, it would be better. But it is hard hearing that again and again from people you love mm -hmm. and care about. And you can set a boundary and say, hey, you know what? I do think it would be healthier for you to move forward. However, I get, you know, for whatever reason, you love him and you're connected. You want to stay. But I cannot keep hearing about this. Mm -hmm. It is it's damaging for my mental health. It mm -hmm. causes anxiety for me. So, you know, if you're choosing to stay in this relationship, I can't be your sounding board anymore. Right. And that's a boundary you per can draw for yourself. Ba perfect boundary. Yep. Respectable and healthy boundary for yourself. Yeah. Yep. I love you. If you know, if you finally, if things do change and you decide to leave him. Oxygen mask. But until then, yeah. Wear your own mask. Put on yeah. your own oxygen mask first. All right. But I, I would, I really do hope that you will update us a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And, yes, please. And don't, by the way, don't be afraid to come on our group session once a month. This is the stuff I really want to hear on group session. We want all the context. I want to hear it all. I mean, I love that 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 we are a family. We can talk and we can schmooze and, you know, but I like getting into the grits. This is why we are here. We're into getting into the grits, know what's going on with you, and that we can all talk about it yeah. and, and get those an those questions answered. Yeah, yeah. So join Patreon and join group. Come do it once a month. One of this week's partners is Babbel. We're in London right now and it feels like such a melting pot. The number of languages I've heard while I'm here because back home, I don't get a lot of exposure to new languages. And that makes sense because only 22% of Americans speak more than one language at home. But that doesn't have to be the rule. You could be the exception because with Babbel, you could start learning a new language this fall and in as little as three weeks. Babbel has so many different languages to choose from and all of Babbel's programs were actually designed by language experts, not AI. And there's so many different ways to learn with Babbel. So whatever learning style you have, you're going to find something that works. For me personally, I love listening to the podcasts and playing the games. There's a lot of quick 10-minute lessons that fit with my schedule, and there's also live classes. And something that I find absolutely amazing is that there's studies from Yale and Michigan State and others that continue to prove how amazing Babbel is. One study even found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. So if you're ready to try for yourself, here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash FKS. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash FKS. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash FKS. Rules and restrictions may apply. What do you got next for us? Okay. Number three. Number three. Mm -hmm. Me? Mm -hmm. Hello, FKS family. Hi. I love hearing both podcasts on replay. Yes, I'm one of those. I love it. I need serious help. I, 27 female, feel lost in life. I'm a five-year elementary teacher. The workload we have is truly astronomical. I recently moved to another state. Things here are done very differently. We have a hundred different things to do a day and literally no time to do it. We have planned time, but it's always taken over by other meetings. There's no time during the workday to actually prepare lessons, presentations, grades, print papers, etc. On top of that, my team is no team. Everyone is their own little team. We are all struggling, but don't seem to be able to come together. I want to quit and never look back. I do not want to teach anymore. I have no other skills or experience in any other field. I had always thought teaching was it for me. Even before this experience, I was already struggling and having doubts about this profession, but I feel like a huge failure. My parents moved to the States when I was little. The trauma of that big change is so big, my brain has blocked it, most of it out. They both work 24-7 to provide for us. They now live comfortably because of their hard work. 
Me, on the other hand, have a degree and still can't seem to manage to keep a job. I mentioned my childhood trauma because for some reason, those feelings are coming back. Very intense feelings. I simply do not feel safe. The anxiety I get from work is like something I had never experienced before. My husband, married a year ago, tells me to quit my job and he will get a second job. This makes me feel horrible. I do not want to put this man through this. I feel like I have failed in life, failed as a partner, teacher, and as an adult. I'm sorry this was long. I have tons more to say, honestly, but it just gets sadder. Jerry, I desperately need your wisdom. Your advice helps us more than you think. At the least, it makes me feel like I'm not crazy. At its greatest, it makes me feel empowered and like I have control over my life. I, I, I have the first thing that kept going through my, right through my head on, in every aspect of, of your writing, burnout. You will have so much burnout right now. And it's, I don't know if your burnout is because of the, the workload or you really just don't like teaching kindergarten. I mean, I've known kindergarten teachers that have loved the, their life all the way through because they got to enjoy each one of these kids. And there's not a kid out here that I know, including this 66-year-old kid, who does not remember their kindergarten teacher. Oh, I do, Mrs. Brown. I love Mrs. Brown. And then Mrs. Adamack for first grade, Mrs. Anderson, Mrs. Martin. I had a Mrs. Anderson too. Miss so, Sinnott. So um, it, it it is such an important and, and, and empowering job with these kids of love that you get. The fact that the that the that the system is screwing with you and that's your problem. I would love to see how AI, and I was w watching a show on this the other day, how AI is being implemented into schools. And some schools says no AI allowed for the teachers. And then there's other schools that are absolutely promoting it, yeah. saying let AI help you because it's really going to help the kids long term. So there's there's a battle with AI in education. Yeah. But if you are tired of the burnout, then yes, definitely you have to find a way of getting yourself healthy or you're not going to be healthy for the kids, period. You may find later that you miss the kids and there's a different way of, of a different district or a different kind of school to go do this and find that, that right thing. But right now it's not right for you. Yeah. And so you have a burden about your, your husband supporting the, uh, the nest find a different job that you'll be able to enjoy and take it like therapy that the job that you're going to go to is going to give you the ability of being productive, bringing something in for the family. You have your own emotional growth because you're able to deal with interaction, but you're not feeling that, that, that constant grind pressure. Yeah. That's what you're rebelling against. Well, I will just say, I think a lot of teachers right now, especially are, mm -hmm very underpaid mm -hmm. for the amount of work they do. They don't just work, you know, eight to four when the teacher, when mm -hmm. the students leave and then they get their papers done. They take work home. They're grading at home. They're buying their own supplies. I saw it all. You know, and they're also now kind of fearing for their lives with the school shootings we have yeah. here in America. So being a teacher right now is, it is such a re intrinsic Re mm -hmm. intrinsically rewarding profession. Mm -hmm. Like you get a lot out of it, helping those kids, but external rewards, teachers are very- You have to love what you're doing. And right now she's burnt out. It's not the money. She is burnt out with yeah, the system. I'm just saying the whole, the whole system is broken. Yeah. Even if she wasn't burnt out, it's not incentivizing right now to mm -hmm. be a teacher. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of great incentive to do it, except if you have the intrinsic motivation- which she is burnt out at that point. Or find the tools that she can get through it. Which, yeah. But it's not there. It's just not there for her. Well, and I will say this is kind of weird that this came up, but I um, I met someone the other day that I went to high school with her son. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, you know, what's he up to these days? Well, you know, he was teaching. He was at Hermantown. But, you know, after a couple years of teaching, he started hearing all of the older teachers that had been there for a while talking about finding ways to get out, that they didn't want to do it anymore. They're all done. They're burnt out. And, you know, he kind of thought to himself, well, if that's what I have to look forward to in 10 years, why don't I get out now? 
Mm -hmm. And so he got out. He is now working for Boston Scientific. Mm -hmm. No idea what he's doing, if he's a med device salesperson or if he's a medical device training person. But you have so many more skills. Got a question. Is he loving it? He loves it. That's, he's so happy he moved on. That's what th this is all where we're going back to. If right now, get out of it because it's yeah. it, it's already proven it's not healthy it's for not you. It's not right serving now. you anymore. Find find a way that you can occupy yourself as a stepping stone or a different direction, at least that you can find relaxation and 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 that you feel good about what you're doing, at least that you're having fun. I'm not telling you to go home and, and be a vegetable. That's not healthy. It is not healthy. You got to still be productive because it makes you feel good about yourself when you're doing something productive and you're enjoying and you like being productive. It's always a win. So I think the ideal outcome and additional info play into this a bit because ideal outcome to be happy, to feel like I have control. I can't feel like this anymore. Additional info, my husband and I do not own a home. We barely make ends meet as is. Only option would be to move in with his parents if I quit, which just adds to me feeling like a failure. I don't have any family where his family lives. Everything just seems hard. And so first of all, I want to point out you have an amazing husband. You have Absolutely. a great teammate. And I mean, if he's willing to take out a second job, I mean- And how lucky you, to have that partner. Yes, Ugh. you have a true teammate, which here's how I see this. Right now where you're at, you're in a slow decline. And you're going to keep going until you literally just break. These other options of you getting out of this toxic decline is not the end of the world. You have to go down from here before you can go up. And I think even just getting out of this profession for you right now is going up. Even if it means you have to go live with his parents and move in with his parents for a little bit because for a year or a few years of dealing with living with his parents or going a backward step as you see it for a lifetime of happiness and years of going forward and not being on a decline, being on this long incline, it seems so worth it to me to give up some happiness or what's left of your happiness to gain a lifetime of this potential happiness. And she's 27. She can, I'm 29 and I live at home. She can, You're she, good. She can certainly give up this job and tomorrow go out and find something else. And she can even implement, there's other ways of teaching and getting paid for teaching without being in a school district. And she can go work at a card shop or something else, just anything for therapy to get away from this, the grind. You don't know and, until you and, explore. And, yeah. and until you go out and look for it, that's what your that's what your goal should be right now. Look for anything that gets you out of here, and even if you're not making near the money, but you're starting. You start by doing something. Something good will come of it. Yeah, you'll transvert. You'll you'll train. You'll you'll do a, uh, a a a shift into the next into the next realm. Whatever that paradigm shift is going to be, or or work shift is going to be, but you'll be out of the negative drain. Yeah, That's what you got to do first of all. And you ask dad for this opinion, dad says, get out of the grind. Absolutely. Looking at like Google and just typing jobs to pursue after teaching, there are articles after articles after articles, websites, lists. There's so many things and you are not a failure. You just found out that teaching is not for you. Uh, it's not for you. Not the way that, not the way it is today. Not well, look at me. Look at me. Okay. I went to grad school for OT. Right. I'm not doing OT. Does that make me a failure? Not at because all. Because I'm not doing what I went to school for? Not at all. No. I live at home at 29 right now. I think a lot of people would say I'm not a failure. Bend your knees as you get, as you get kicked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're ready. I'm ready to move out. But you are so valuable and don't sell yourself short. There's so many other ways you can translate those skills into something that's going to make you happy. Um, the list I'm looking at right now has 23 options. There's, There's 35 options on another corporate trainer, education consultant, sales rep. There's so many things you can do. And one thing that comes to mind, especially, you know, given you went into teaching, you probably really wanted to help kids be a nanny. 
Being a nanny was one of the best jobs I ever had. And it is the job that I made the most money in. I made more money being a nanny than a flight attendant, a sales rep at Lululemon making $20 plus an hour. I made more nannying than I did serving a lot of years. Being a nanny is so fun. And then guess what? You go home, you're not taking your work home with you because that would be kidnapping. And, we can, and when you and when you meet the new family you're nanny for, you're, you can just go by Mary Poppins. Sometimes you get to go on fun vacations with them. Yeah. Well, I think to round this one out, I think the real failure would be getting to the end and looking back and realizing how unhappy you were yeah. your whole life. I think the true success way to not fail Move is- on. Happiness. Yeah. If you Choose are yourself. happy, no matter how much money you make, no matter you know what you're doing, if it makes you happy and you get to the end, you look back and you're like, I'm happy. And I was happy mm-hmm. for most of my life. I'm that is the true win. And you can never be called a failure no. if you're happy. Not a failure. Not at all. Yeah, absolutely. Let us know what you do. So many things. And look up some of these jobs. There's some really cool ones. Medical assistants on there. Things you would never think of are jobs. Yeah. Medical scribe. That was one of my really fun jobs. And I think your experience would directly correlate into that. And you don't need a crazy healthcare background. They teach you all the, the medical terminology. There's some fun stuff for you. I'm excited for you. Open your mind to accept something different. Yeah. Open yourself up. It's going to work out. Like you said, the support system, the partner you got. Dynamite. It's going to be good. Yep. It's going to be okay. Next one. Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. There's been quite a few times in my life where I just have not been able to handle my mental health on my own. And without therapy, it would not be a good time for a little Miss Morgan. I think we all have times where we feel like it's just too much and we're not necessarily always capable of handling every single emotion, especially when they start to stack up. And where do you turn to if you're not equipped to handle it on your own? Therapy. Who can help you in times of need? A therapist. And that's where BetterHelp can come in. Whether that's learning positive coping strategies or learning how to set boundaries for the first time, you can give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And you just fill out a brief questionnaire to get started, and then you get matched with a licensed therapist. And one thing I really like about BetterHelp is they recognize that it might take some time to find the therapist that fits you. So you can switch therapists at any time for no additional cost. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash FKS today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash FKS. This next one, buckle up. I'll put a parachute in case I I have to jump out. (laughs) You might. (laughs) You might. Hi, Jerry, Justin, and Morgan. Hi. Thank you so much for reading my story. I, 32 female, and my husband, 32 male, have two kids. Three years ago, we moved to a new state for my husband's job. We moved to a state with no friends or family, and I haven't met a single friend here. We moved right at the start of COVID, so it made sense we didn't meet anyone right away. I am a stay-at-home mom, and I hate it. I never planned to be one but did need to be one for the first year or so after we moved to get settled and figure everything out. Before we moved, our marriage wasn't the best, and it's only gotten worse. I've wanted a divorce for the last couple of years, but was hoping that moving would help our marriage and give us a fresh start. Moving definitely made everything worse, and I am so stressed out and anxious all of the time. I am at home all of the day with no friends, no family, no support, and it's really, really hard. I've tried a couple of the mommy friend apps, but where we are has very strong religious views, and it seems like if you aren't in the church, no one really talks to you. I've tried making friends with parents from my kids' school, but that didn't work out either. Since we moved, I have been unable to get a job. I've applied for hundreds of jobs. Literally, I've kept a spreadsheet, and I didn't hear back from any of them. Now that three years have passed, it seems impossible to get a job. 
I need a work from home job so I can still be flexible for the kids. And it wouldn't be worth it for me getting a job out of the house since childcare would take almost my entire paycheck. And as my husband says, would be my job to figure out the kids because since they were born, I handled and paid for all the childcare. I am so overwhelmed and stressed that now even looking at jobs gives me awful anxiety and I end up not being able to apply for jobs because it's all too much. So my question for you all is what tips slash advice do you have to help someone get back into working after being out for a couple of years and how to not get so anxious about finding a job? I have two college degrees and have been working since I was 16, so it's not like I don't have any prior work experience. I've worked hard my entire life, and I think that's why I am having such a hard time with not being able to get a job since we moved. Ideal outcome, get a remote job that pays enough that I can move out, get a divorce, and move on with my life. I feel like I've been stuck and drowning for the last three years and just want to move past it. I want to stop being so anxious, angry, and stressed. Additional info, I did tell my husband last year I wanted a divorce and we talked for a while and came up with some things to work on and fix. But honestly, nothing has changed since then. It was better for a couple of months. Then he got lazy and stopped trying. I have been considering moving back home to where my parents are, a few states away, but I don't think that that will actually help anything. I don't want to take my kids away from their dad and I still wouldn't have a job. I do want a peaceful divorce and not to traumatize my kids if possible. I'll let you start with this. You you know exactly how to find jobs. I love finding people jobs. Um, I actually just got my best friend Jordan her new job. Well, I didn't get it for her. She got it for her, but I was the one that sent it to her. Um, My favorite place is to look on Indeed, but I think if this person has applied to 100 different jobs, she's trying. She's got two degrees. This person's got... Yeah, two degrees. And she's trying. She's she's got to just figure out, you know, what what it's going to be. Well, you know what's interesting too is I think sometimes jobs will think you're overqualified. Mm-hmm. Like one of the jobs I really wanted, and I'm now glad I didn't get. But they literally told me in my last interview, like we think you're overqualified and you won't be happy here. So like maybe take one of those degrees off your resume. Like I could see your resume needing some tweaks Mm -hmm. and that being the issue. Could be. But also like I think what I'm taking from this is you're not happy. Yes, your husband for some weird reason is making you responsible for all the childcare, which I think is fucked. But you're not happy. So even if most of your paycheck is going to childcare expenses. You're getting out of the house. You're mm-hmm. getting some of your own money. You're, you know, getting a chance to meet people and make friends. Lululemon, the job I had there, I made some great friends and I made pretty good money. So there's options. And if you get a divorce, your husband is going to have to pay child support, mm-hmm. which you can then put towards childcare expenses. Yeah. You getting divorced might make him participate more and you want a divorce. That's your end goal. You're not happy. Get a divorce. Like he's going to have to pay child support. And if it takes getting a job at Starbucks or Target, Target has amazing benefits. Like Target is a really fun place to work. My friend worked there and loved it. Mm -hmm. There's other jobs you can take as like a little bit of a stepping stone. Get your own money, get your own financial freedom. And it just gets you your foot out the door. The, the, that's the big, the, the 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 biggest word you just said. It gets you going. It gets your foot out the door. You have to start by getting out the door mm-hmm. and doing it amicably. Great. You, you, you've you've said told him that you want a divorce. No one is saying that you have to stay married. Go through with it. Yeah. Go pull the trigger and just sit down with him and say. We can do it in an expensive way or we can do it the easy way. Let's just be realistic because the judges themselves don't want to see you in there. They really want you to come in amicably. We we have a plan. We know how we're going to do it. So they can rubber stamp stuff. They don't want to see the lawyers get all your money and having you take out loans to pay lawyer fees. They want yeah. it to go easy. So have this conversation as responsible parents saying, how can we be responsible? 
I'm not looking at hurting you with the kids. I don't want to see them traumatized. I just know that we need to be apart. And I have a feeling that once you get to that part, even finding a job will be easier for you because you're not going to have all this anger that's going to be projecting. Yeah. You are projecting anger and frustration. And I think that you'll get rid of a lot of that once you once you find yourself, you know, free. So that's that's my thought. Yeah, I mean, the only re really thing I can reference is I remember when Morgan was having such a hard time getting a job. Oh, I went a year. And had all the qualifications and we just sat there and it was like, I mean, at that point, you had some kind of thing to point to, like COVID was happening and that created all sorts of issues in mm -hmm. the labor markets, but it it still was kind of baffling to us. And I feel that same feeling with this, where I'm curious what you're applying to, if it's all the same type of job, what positions are you shooting for? Um, not that you'd be underqualified, but it just, it's like sparking this curiosity in me. Why is it so challenging? Why is there nothing there? And is it, do you need to lower the bar? Do you need to go to different, do you need to open up uh, the range of what you're looking at? Maybe there's a consultant that can help you find the job. Right. Job is, it, is it going lower, higher? Is it going wider? Maybe um, it's not fully remote. To find, right, to find that job that gets the ball rolling, right? Gets the engine mm -hmm. started. And then, you know, once you find a job, you don't have to, no, nothing's locking you there. No, for, you can move on. These days, people are job hopping. I mean, it's about the 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 worker, not so much about, you know, it used to be about you work for a company, you build loyalty, you stay mm -hmm. there forever. Not your work. But three, no, I, think, like, I think the most of this is three years. Yeah. Like just once you get the process started, I think you'll find this wealth of inspiration and freedom and just, you know, you'll, you'll find that happiness even in something you're not necessarily is your end goal, but will lead to the end goal. You'll figure it out. And just baby steps. Yeah. Baby steps. I think that is probably the best advice. Like really analyze your resume and broadening your horizons. Honestly, feel free to email us your resume. I'd love to look at it. I love looking on Indeed for people Morgan for jobs. Morgan could have many different careers. <laughs> I love looking on Indeed. It is honestly browsing Zillow and browsing Indeed for jobs is like my happy pastime. You need a multiple lifetimes. You need to be a real estate agent. Oh, I love real you estate. You need to be a broker for jobs. I could do that. You need it. I, like, I would be so really. I would be a many recruiter. things you want to do. <laughs> it's just so fun. I think it's so fun and. I mean, I'm the same way. Yeah. So send us your resume. Put it, email us in the update form and attach a link to your resume on a Google Doc. I'll go through it. I'll take a peek. <laughs> Tell me what you're interested in. <laughs> you know, I, I would love to do that. But honestly, um, if you're comfortable commenting too, like go to the YouTube comment. Maybe there's people out there that are like, I wonder where she lives. Oh, Utah? I'm actually hiring for my 100%. boutique in Utah. Like, that's what this community is about. Yeah. So I'll, you know, you might, I might not be alone. There might be someone else that likes looking on Indeed and they've got time too. So it's all networking. Let's go. Well, and I think networking. that our teacher, our former, going to be a former teacher, mm -hmm. this is the same boat. Like yep. we, you know, we should open up like another little like THT, Father Knows Something subreddit for people looking for networking opportunities. Mm -hmm. Networking. We do get it a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I told your told your brother. Where, you know, I said three degrees of uh, to to know somebody. He says no, it's ten. And I go. It's actually, I think it's seven. It's seven degrees, seven. six or we seven. We start a it, new it, app. We we actually got it pretty close. Some of the names he picked up. I said we're three degrees here. We're three <laughs> degrees here. Yeah, I think it is three. I think you can. You don't know because like, you got to talk to all your people. But I've found my third degree connection to Nicolas Cage. See, I think degrees. it's three degrees. Three degrees. But uh, yeah, honestly. And by the way, Nicholas, if you're listening, now it's one. <laughs> hey, I would just love to meet him. He just seems like such a fun uncle vibe. But uh, one more thing I was thinking of too, for both of these people, if you guys are interested in childcare, I feel like um, daycare services, mm -hmm. print money. What, what people pay for daycare for their kids, if you can open up a creditable, mm -hmm. whatever certifications that, you need to that, get to do that's that. That's the trick. 
Honestly, you're uh, you want to stay home to help with making sure your kids are good and childcare needs. A little daycare business could be cash cow. Yep. Anyways, financial freedom. Got to start. You got to get the motor going. That's all I can tell you. Get the motor going. Another one of this week's partners is Hungry Root. What's for dinner has been stressing us out while we've been on vacation from not really liking anything when we do figure out what we're eating to Justin's tummy giving us a tough time. I wish we had Hungry Root. Hungry Root fills your fridge with healthy foods and simple recipes so you can actually fill your schedule with stuff you want to be doing, not grocery shopping or prepping crazy extravagant meals. Hungry Root makes enjoying meals really easy. One of the great things about Hungry Root is the variety that they have from snacks and breakfast items that we sometimes either skip or just forget about. Hungry Root has great options that when you just need to grab something quick, it's there. The best part is everything that Hungry Root offers follows a simple standard. It's gotta taste good, be quick to make, contain whole and trusted ingredients. So if you want to spend less time shopping and cooking and more time actually enjoying that food, give Hungry Root a try. Right now, Hungry Root is offering our listeners 30% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash FKS to get 30% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash FKS. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. Link is also in the description. Okay. Last one is all you. Oh, Let's no. Go. Get ready. Oh, no. Bucko. Number five. How do I tell my boyfriend that him not being open with his parents about our relationship is affecting me? Hey, FKS family. I wanted to start by saying how much I enjoy your podcast. Second, English is not my first language, so I apologize if there's anything you don't understand. My boyfriend and I met six years ago when I was an exchange student in Korea. After a year of dating, I had to return to Colombia, and we did long distance until I moved back to Korea last July. While my family has been aware of him since the beginning, with him even meeting my sister and having video calls with my parents, he hasn't told his parents anything about me. And I mean anything. They don't even know he's got a girlfriend. Wait, how long have they been together? Six years? Yeah. Wow. I understand cultural differences, but yeah. given that we've been together for six years and have even talked about getting married next year, it is hard for me to not feel bad about it. He's attempted to broach the topic with them previously, but his fear of their reaction to him dating a foreigner holds him back. I'm making an effort to empathize with his situation, yet I can't help but question whether there's something about me that makes him hesitant to proudly acknowledge our relationship. Despite being an independent woman with a successful career, I can't shake off the feeling that there's something wrong with me. I've cried so many nights over this. I love him, and I know he loves me too, but I've made significant sacrifices to be with him, including leaving my country, my family, and everything I know. The fact that he can't openly admit that he's in a relationship with me breaks my heart. It is important to me that he tells them about us when he is ready, out of his own free will, and not because I am nagging him about it. So how can I bring up this topic to him? How can I let him know how this situation is making me feel and still leave me meeting his parents his choice? When I was in Aussie land... And we were having the discussion regarding racism. Racism. Thank you. When they were talking about you know people being racist, I'm not saying this is the case. I'm saying that it might be just like this that his family is so culturally, you know, locked in that anyone outside their culture is a problem for their for them to go through with with their son, and he's terrified of it that he finds it's better to have a, whatever wherever they live and whatever their life is to be between them and not involve this pressure that he's feeling. Now, he's got to he's got to get the gut sooner or later because you know, be a man about it. If if you know, if this is the person I want to be in love with, mom and dad, I I want you to meet the person I'm in love with and meet her for who she is 
and let, let it go for that and see, give the parents a chance to succeed or fail. If they fail, that's their problem. We move on, we go forward with our life. But you can at least tell your woman what you're dealing with so she has a clear picture and be disclosing because he's not disclosing a, a central most core of who he is, what's going on with his family. He needs to be open about it. If he's your partner, he's got to trust that you're going to be able to deal with whatever he's going to tell you, and he doesn't have to carry that burden himself. So how do you bring it up to him? Point blank. I mean, it's time. This is six years. And Point blank. I, I'm like questioning something in my head myself where like I understand there's a lot of cultures that mm -hmm. want their children to marry someone from that culture, mm -hmm. from that race. And I'm just in my head, I was thinking like, just because they want him to marry a Korean girl, does that make them racist? I don't know the answer for that. I mm -hmm. don't know if anyone does. Maybe it's obvious. I don't know. But I think like he needs to decide what he really wants, like mm -hmm. appeasing his family or being with the person he loves. I mean, this is six years down the road now. She moved from Colombia to Korea. Mm -hmm. Like this is a huge sacrifice she's made for him. And he is not willing to even do the bare minimum of tell his family he has a girlfriend. No, he, the minimum is tell the girlfriend why. Well, and get this. Uh, we have different bare minimums. Like, yeah, maybe she understands why. Maybe she doesn't. But like six years down the road, mm -hmm. I better not be a secret because mm -hmm. otherwise we're done. Yeah, You get one more chance. Like, I agree. You're going to look back three years from now and you might still be a secret and you're going to be like, damn, I he, wasted three more years. He's got to own up for what's going on and then they can deal together how to deal with it. But he's not even owning up to what the real issue is. And that's my biggest problem starting with. Yeah. Before I go to step two. Yeah, that makes be, sense. Before I can get be, be upset about step two, I'm, I'm still struggling with step one. <laughs> I'm just like sad because I, I do understand that's probably a lot of pressure for him if he has mm -hmm. a very traditional family and all of that. Um, but we, we have one life and we need to live it for ourselves, mm -hmm. not our parents, not even our partners, not our friends. And uh, you're living a half life. You're living a lie. Well, that's why I said he's got to, just, that's why I said the first thing is he's got to disclose, he's got to own up to her what's really going on. Salt in the wound. For the past three months, my parents have been organizing their trip to Korea to see me and eventually meet him in person. Initially, it was planned for our parents to meet when my family traveled to Korea, but they'll be here next week and he still hasn't disclosed our relationship to his parents. He's not going to. The fact that we've dated for so long without me meeting his parents is extremely weird for my culture. My parents will be coming from France where they visited my sister, met her boyfriend and his family. They've been dating for a little less than a year. And I know they were expecting the same from visiting me. And I just can't help but feel pressured and ashamed that they won't be able to do so. It's up to her to make it happen. Oh, it just makes you sad. It's sad. I, it's not. He's got, he's got to, he's got to understand it. This is where it's, where it's going to be. If it fails, at least they tried. And the, and his parents accordingly disappointed him. They, they didn't, support what you know what what you would want from your parents to support with their children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he can move on and go do what he wants with with the woman that he loves without anyone knowing why. We all know why. It's Yeah, it's interesting that I guess after 6 years he still like hasn't even given them the chance. Like maybe they'd surprise him, maybe That's there's right. not an issue. And it's like is there a problem with the family or is it more so his own embarrassment or whatever, you know, he's we don't know. got going on in his head. So we don't know. You know, how do you broach this? Because I feel like a lot of people think ultimatums aren't healthy. So how would you approach this without making it an ultimatum? Like I, would, I meet your it, parents or we break up. No, yeah. I, I would say I want to know what's going on. I'm letting you know that my parents are going to be here. You have not come clean with me. There's a it's causing a problem within my trust within you mm -hmm. and it's up to you now to fix it yeah that's not that's not an ultimatum it's up to you to fix it tell me that you're tell me what what's going on 
I need to know. Yeah. Have yeah. faith that I can handle whatever you're going to tell me. Do at that point, if it doesn't improve after that conversation, do you give an ultimatum? Like, do you feel in this sense an ultimatum isn't necessarily manipulative or unhealthy? Like, do you feel an ultimatum is kind of a well, must me, here? I, I, let me ask you a different question. Do you want to be in a relationship where someone can't come clean with you? I probably would have been done a lot sooner. Uh, I, that might, so it, no, okay. no, I wouldn't want so to So it's be. not an ultimatum. I'm not going to be in this relationship. It's a boundary. Mm -hmm. It's a boundary. Yeah. And we've had that conversation. Like, what's the difference between a boundary and an ultimatum? Mm -hmm. A boundary is you control yourself. You mm -hmm. are the only thing that you can control yep. in any situation. So you, you know. You, you set it for yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you deserve better. Like, it's exciting to have your families meet. It's it's cool to create this life together. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what makes me sad is it's like, this could be such an awesome thing. And the parents think it's going to be. And so it's, ah. Uh, yeah. It's still going to be an amazing time having your parents come visit. But I, it sucks. It sucks not. And don't wait. Yeah. You got to, you got to engage. I mean, how long is, how long ago was this thing written? I don't have the date on here right now, but. I mean, this could be three years ago. No. It's not. No, it's not that long, but please. Please, please update us. The trip definitely happened because I know it's it's probably older than a week. Yeah, August 24th. So it's a couple weeks old now. The trip happened. The parents now, can, have probably can, already left. Can we send a note that we that we picked it? We, we can. You should send a note tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. She might be awake right now. And um, we, ahead. That's right. we can, re when we record, if we get an update back in time, we could record one. Um, and patch it back in. Otherwise, we we are in need of an updates episode here on FKS. Yeah. So we're due. Hopefully, we can put one together with some I good updates. I would drop updates. her a line right now. <laughs> yeah, we'll email her after we're done recording. We are. This is it. We we got a Patreon. We're doing Patreon. We got a Patreon. We are doing Patreon, but we're, but we are now done with this episode. That's so, right. Episode so is with, over. With with all with with all of us waiting. Holding our breath. Holding. No, I don't know what's going on right <laughs> now. Drum roll. <laughs> We're going to say goodnight to you and join us on Patreon. And uh, Justin is going to immediately send that individual the uh, the note that we did read her story, which we typically do not do. But we're going to let this one know immediately that we, are, we read the story and we want to know what's going on in an update. Sending yeah. it now. So she's on it. Not even him. She's on it. I, got, I want it done now. That's chop, it. chop, chica. Hey, everybody. Uh, we had to come back and just do a small little addition. Miss Morgan has a request. Go for it. We are going to do a Father Knows Something spooky stories this year. So if you have any paranormal experiences or just really scary, creepy experiences, please write them in to us. We'd love to include them. And we all kind of need a little break. You mm -hmm. know, spooky season is upon us. And sometimes... The best solution for our real life problems is a nice distraction. Mm -hmm. True. And so, some people have real, and some of you really do have real stories that you may be afraid to tell about, tell to people that something that, that is occurring in your life or someone that was in your life that may have passed or things of this nature. And, you know, we, I'm a spiritual individual. I, yeah. be I believe in the universe. And they don't need to be like scary, spooky, no. just kind of like spooky season vibes. So, Ghost visits, paranormal, just creepy crawly. We can always open up for discussion and talk about it. It'll be good. But there will be a link for those. And if you're on Patreon, post them on our Patreon link because those are the ones that are getting prioritized. But uh, yeah, that's my note. Number one, be sure to subscribe. Number two, uh, join us on Patreon. Yes. And number three, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, Bye friends.